Hi, welcome back to our class on pending. Last time we saw, as you can see on the screen, last time we saw this comparison between axial extension, transverse shears, twist and bending. The first three we have already done. Now we want to look at and develop the corresponding expressions for bending. Turns out that we can do it in two parts. We will develop the expression, the first two uh, in this class, and then we will work so we will develop these two things, which are the counterparts of these two in this class. That's easy to do. And then we will develop these two results so that we can see how the two pieces work. Okay. So let's get started. Idea is very simple. So what happened? I started out with a rectangular shaft like that. Right. The shaft is long. The length is delta L. The cross section is rectangular. And I have the x axis like this, y, z. And then in the y, z plane, so what is happening is in the y, z plane, it becomes a shape that looks like that. Right? Start smiling because of bending. So it should be obvious to you that when I bend this, the bottom of this beam becomes pulled, becomes longer. The top of this beam becomes shorter. So the bottom is under tension because it's getting pulled. And the top is under compression because it's getting squeezed. So in the middle, somewhere it will go from getting pulled to getting squeezed. And so there is a line in the middle which is neither getting pulled nor getting squeezed. That is, it's not changing length. This is the most important line in the beam because everything depends upon where this line is. And in our case, uh, it will turn out to be exactly in the middle of the beam. I'll show you why it will be exactly in the middle of the beam later. Right now, we know that there's some such location. Okay, so we don't really care where it is. And all we know is that our x-axis starts from there. And I mean, our origins for the cross section starts from there. Okay. So this line is called the neutral axis. So above the neutral axis, things are in compression. Below the neutral axis, things are in tension. When I smile, that is when I do like that, right? Of course, if I do this way, it will be the opposite. Okay. So remember, I'm not taking this shaft and applying a force to it. I'm taking the shaft and applying a bending moment like that. Okay. And you can see the smile and I want you to understand that. Okay. So that's what we are doing. Pure bending moment. Now that we have that, we know what is the radius. So let us mark some notations. This is A. A prime, sorry, A, A, let's call that. The top line is called B, B, and the bottom line is C, C. Okay, and we are going to measure Y from here upwards. So this is Y positive. If I go down, it's Y negative. Why is it called Y? Because that's the coordinate system. Okay, so now that we have that, I'm going to redraw this like that. Okay. So this is A, A, this is the prime, this is B, B prime and C, C prime. So, and if I draw the two lines, it will intersect somewhere. That is the axis of rotation. This point is the rotation axis. This angle is called delta theta. So this radius of this curvature is called R. Okay. 
if I want to say where is so and from here to here this this is y so let us call this point O so O A prime is R O B prime is R minus y okay so the other thing is A A prime equal to sorry A prime A prime equal to A A which is equal to delta L since a prime a prime is the neutral axis are you with me so this length is delta l so i'm going to draw this so this length is delta l right so remember when i started out Sorry, I erased it. So a prime a prime equal to a a equal to delta l. But b b is also equal to delta l. C c is also equal to delta l. Why is that? These are all this one. C c a a b b are all there. So now I want to find out what am I interested in? How so? Our question in front of us is. what is the string along b prime b prime so how do i find that that's called axial strain epsilon xx is change in length divided by original length right which is what's the change in length which is final length minus original length divided by original length which is b prime b prime minus b b divided by pb okay let's see if you can write this out so how much is b prime b prime turns out to be can you see this radius from here to here is r minus y this angle is delta theta so b prime b prime is radius times angle which is r minus y delta theta right similarly bb which is a prime a prime is r times delta theta why is this r minus y and this is r this is r minus y because the radius to b is only ob the radius to b prime is only o b prime the radius to a prime is o a prime can you see and o a prime is r o b prime is r minus y so now we are all ready that's pretty easy so i'm going to substitute it all i'm going to say this so b prime b prime is r minus y r minus y delta theta bb is delta l which we knew you can also write it as r delta theta so they are both the same so delta l is the same as r delta theta so then it's pretty easy so i'm going to substitute it i'm going to do a clever substitution so you can see how it works okay this is r minus y delta theta minus r delta theta the denominator is going to i'm just going to leave it as delta l why this is convenient see i want you to realize this is that this is that this is that so what happens is i will get a very nice result which says this this thing will gets cancelled out and i will get epsilon xx 
is minus y delta theta over delta l. Yay, we are done. Notice that's our list. This is the counterpart to gamma equal to delta phi r over delta l. Can you see? I got delta theta instead of delta phi. Instead of radius along this thing, I got height. And then instead of denominator delta l, I still have delta l. But you can ask me, hey, wait a minute. You only got me b b prime or b prime b prime. What about c prime c prime? Hey, there's no problem. The beauty of algebra comes in very nicely. The only thing that will change is this thing, right? Final length. Because original length for all the fibers was the same. It's all the same thing. R delta theta delta L. So the question is, is it obvious to you that for C prime C prime, I will get R plus Y type of thing. But this is where we'll use algebra. And you will see that for B prime B prime, Y is positive which implies epsilon xx is negative. Compression. Can you see that? <coughs> For C prime C prime, y is negative. Formula is the same. But epsilon xx is positive. Isn't that nice? Beautiful, nice result. Right? So I want you to understand that's a pretty nifty little result. And you can also write it in terms of R because R delta theta equal to delta L, which implies delta theta over delta L is 1 over R. And this is called radius of curvature. This R is called radius of curvature. It tells you how curved it is. So if I take this beam and I really curve it a lot, R will be very small because delta theta, uh, delta L is fixed, delta theta is very large. Okay. If I don't curve it very large, R will be very large. Can you see that? That's called radius of curvature. So you can also write epsilon yy, epsilon xx as minus y over R. And I'm going to write this in words so you can see axial strain equals minus height above neutral axis divided by radius of curvature So notice it says height above neutral axis, right? So if the thing is below, the height above neutral axis is negative and automatically things will work. Okay, so we got this formula. Then it's easy to compute that the stress will be, sigma will be E times axial strain, which is minus E delta, sorry, minus EY delta theta over delta L, which is minus EY over R. And if you want to get a cartoon in your head, the cartoon you should have is this thing. So here's the smiley face for the beam, right? And the top bottom part is in tension. So I'm going to pull on the bottom. The neutral is zero. So it's going to go to zero there. And the top part is on compression. So it looks like that. Same way here, bottom part is under tension. So it will look like a windmill, but the windmill is going this way. Can you see? So the windmill looks like this. Something like that. Okay, I'm sorry. I should have flipped it around. So let me draw it right. The windmill looks like this. If this is the beam. The windmill will look like this. Pull, squeeze. 
Make sense to you? So I want you to contrast that with the windmill for torsion. Remember that is, that's a cross section. The windmill for torsion looked like this. This is all sideways. Can you see that? So the windmill for torsion is this. The windmill for bending is that. So if you remember those two things, those cartoons will help you a lot in terms of quickly figuring out what the forces are. That's what I want to talk about. Thank you.